I think it goes without saying that I'm excited to introduce our keynote speaker today. He is an icon in the entertainment industry. Um, he's, but more than that, he's really been at the forefront of a number of the trends that we've seen in society over the last few decades. We've everything from personal branding to marketing to reality television. Um, he's now lent his considerable profile to um, the cannabis industry, and he's actually one of the first high-profile businessmen to really not only see the potential in the cannabis sector, but put his money where his mouth is um, and actually take on an advisory role uh, with the company. So he's here today to speak uh, as the Chief Evangelist Officer of Invictus MD, but he's probably best known to all of us as the man that's made us rock and roll all night for the past 50 years. And on that note, please welcome Mr. Gene Simmons, everybody. One, two, three, is this on? Well, I'm used to being in a concert. You call that loud? <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. Is that loud enough? How about if we combine it like that? Would you mind raising my volume? I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> it's nice to see you all here. Um, for those of you that come from another planet, I'm that weird guy with the tongue and the thing in the band, uh, Kiss as it happens, is about to start a three-year monstrous tour. And <laughs> yes, I want you. <laughs> Part the C and show them what you're wearing. Yeah, that's how we do it. No, 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 you can get sick. Okay, get out of here. I have no idea who she is or anything. By the way, uh, do you speak any other languages besides English? Hungarian. Hungarian? Yes, no, Would you come on up here? <laughs> Say a few words in Hungarian. Nagyon jó és nagyon szép itt lenni a Gene Simmons el, egy olyan incredible, smart, intelligent. No, Hungarian, Hungarian. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Olyan, nem tudok beszélni, mert olyan, how do you say excited in Hungarian? Well, you're the one talking. Okay. <laughs> Ez egy olyan, nem is tudok beszélni magyarul, englishul, de ez egy nagyon-nagyon nekem egy olyan... Okay, that's enough. Okay, <laughs> Amit uh, a barátnám akart mondani, hogy uh, azt, azt akartál mondani, igen. Én beszélek magyarul, mert anyukám szület Magyarországból. Ich kann auch sprechen ein bisschen Deutsch, ich habe gelernt auf der Schule, and I can also rap in Hebrew, very little Japanese and some English. Koki ken kagadeska, otashi wa jin shimozes. Minasan hakshu, hakshu. Ah, you understand. Psycho des. Oh, Hebrew. Yiddish is the weak man's language. Hebrew. Hebrew. Hashem sheli chayim, nolati bechaifa. Yiddish is please. Ma gamata? Ma shem shelcha? Nocha? What? Shimon. Shimon. All right. Anyway, even though I'm really an exciting and good-looking guy in real life, uh, I want you to know that I came to North America. You, you hear America all the time, but it really includes Canada. We both are kindred spirits, share democratic and entrepreneurial ideas, and here and in America, you can be whatever you dream and whatever you're willing to work for. So I came to America as an eight-and-a-half-year-old boy of a concentration camp survivor, my mother, and I couldn't speak a word of English. English was my third language. And when I came to America, I couldn't believe everything was larger than life and all that, and I learned very quickly that the less I knew how to speak English and the, and the less I knew the lay of the land, the right thing at the right place, the right time, I wouldn't be making any money. And that people had a hard enough time judging somebody who didn't look like he came from here, never mind the fact that he couldn't put two words together. 
that's called an inferred fiduciary duty to yourself to figure out language skills, people skills, ad infinitum, ad nauseum. See, that's business language. And I had to learn that as a kid. And the better I spoke English, the more the chicks liked me. Because <laughs> you can't walk up to and shake, hello, how you at? You know, they're not going to pay attention to you. Sorry. Dress British, think Yiddish. But that also means if I go to another country, I learn to speak the language correctly in the right sound of the language, because the last thing they want to hear is, como esta, Jose? They don't want to hear that. <laughs> so I'll quickly lead you through the astonishing and exciting life, don't be jealous, that I've had. Um, I've never worried about getting a job. I've always loved the work ethic. And I never want to hang around anybody that doesn't share that God-given blessing that America and Canada gives you. The right to work as hard as you want and anything you want, and the sky's the limit, including inventing flight where Icarus failed by the two least qualified brothers on the face of the planet, two guys that owned a bicycle shop in the middle of Kitty Hawk, wherever the fuck that is. That includes the telephone and the light that lights darkness in today, all invented by North Americans, all invented by the least qualified people on the not big corporate entities. It starts from the people. All the music we love, the fashions we love, started by the least qualified people, by people like this, and me. So I went to school, became a sixth grade teacher because I wanted to give back, and I started teaching in Spanish Harlem in New York City. Spanish Harlem was a tough place and it still is. And when I first walked in on one of the first few days, I learned a few words in Spanish. Can anybody speak Spanish? Do the bane. Any language, baby. <laughs> anybody speak Spanish? Not one? Oh my God. Do I have Espanol? Well, why the fuck didn't you say so? <laughs> so on one of the first, could you believe that guy? <laughs> so when I, on one of the first days, I walked in and I learned some Spanish. Maricón la tuya tu madre, judeo. It does not mean good morning, Jewish person. <laughs> right? He's smiling, because it kind of means, get the, 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 the little. In all seriousness, I... While I was working, you know, they say spread the risk on Wall Street. While I was working as a sixth grade teacher, afterwards I'd go down to a delicatessen where I was the guy at the checkout counter. You take the money, put some on the side. No, no. Put it in the cash register. They'd also give you food so I could eat as much as I wanted and take home doggy bags. Right after that, on Fifth Avenue and 14th Street, I'd go to 10 East 23rd Street and walk so I could save the bus money. And this is at age, oh, probably 56. No. <laughs> I was uh, just in my early 20s, so I'd scrounge every penny I could, and we'd start rehearsing and trying to put together this band we never saw on stage because we were so bored. So I was basically living in the loft at 10 East 23rd Street. Um, important. They'll keep going on all the time. And we put together, in the course of a year, a band called KISS. Didn't, ha didn't know anything about designing or makeup or anything. It just happened. Within a year and a half of forming, KISS started playing stadiums across North America. Anaheim Stadium, stuff like that. KISS has been around 45 years, and we are, oh, thank you. And don't I look good, shit. <laughs> and KISS, uh, I'm proud to say, is North America's number one gold record award-winning group of all time in all categories. 100, 100 million albums sold, 5,000 licensed products, everything from KISS condoms to KISS caskets. We'll get you coming in. We'll get you going. <laughs> Does that translate in Hungarian? <laughs> um, and we have an awful lot of fun. I have an awful lot of fun, but I work my ass off. And that's a good thing, because if you meet people who have a hard time falling asleep, 
These are folks that don't work hard. You know who has no, no problem going to sleep at night? Ditch diggers. You'll never say, you know, I'm bored, I can't get to sleep. They're thrilled to go to sleep. I urge you, from just a street guy, I have a lot of money now, don't kid yourself, I'm, uh, I'm swimming in it. Get up every day, goddammit, and go to work. Really, be like Carlos Slim and Buffett and Gates and everybody else. Even if you don't do it for commerce, do it for philanthropy, get up at the crack of dawn, your heart is thumping, you're above the crown, bless you, because you could just as easily be below ground. Get up there and pump that heart. Be at the right place at the right time with the right thing. Surround yourself with winners. Don't be around losers. All those, all those adages you know, that we learned that are profoundly accurate, which is why we have a packed room, because you're here to hear what I'm going to say. So we have uh, quite a few different businesses, and this is all going to lead to Invictus-MD.com. I'm a founding partner of Rock and Brews restaurant chain. We have two at LAX. Two at Cabo in Mexico, Hawaii, they're spreading across North America, it does well. Um, I just got involved with IAC, one of the world's largest automotive parts company. In fact, I'm going to meet Nat, the CEO, tomorrow. Deal is signed. First thing I did was connect McLaren. Uh, IAC made all the doors for Volvos, all of them. So it's a large company with 20 factories, 240,000 folks, and they wanted to move up. So what I do is called up the CEO of McLaren, and in a matter of a few weeks, they're making a deal that's going to mean hundreds of millions of bucks, and that's what I do. I'm fortunate enough that people take my calls, whether it's the Dalai Lama, and you know it's true, or Mr. Clinton, or even, yes, I can get to Mr. Trudeau. I was going to do a joke, but I can't because we're, we're in Canada. You can't do any jokes anymore about anything. Will everybody please lighten up? So we have, uh, thank you. Because I am a fucking joke. So uh, starting another venture called Titans of Rock with a Canadian. It's going to be a Canadian-American company music festivals, and the first one launches in Grand Forks, Canada, August 1, 2, 3. So it's already ongoing. There's Simmons Books and Simmons Comic, but a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Okay, now we're finally getting into the area. What the hell do you know about cannabis? Actually, nothing. And I don't know how to cook, but I have a restaurant chain. I can't read or write music, but we're America's number one band, blah, blah, blah. What I do know is that I kick the tires. I surround myself with due diligence folks who can dig farther and uh, get into the stuff and make me understand more because I'm a very simple kind of guy, even though I've read the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, millennials, once upon a time, there were books. <laughs> Pathetic. You ever go into a room full of millennials? Can you write down my number? And they go like, right? Beep, 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 beep. That's what they are. <laughs> yeah, I have stopped concerts, gone over, and I say, can I see your text? And they give me the thing, and I throw it away. <laughs> yeah, and people just go, yeah, fucking A, yeah, but don't take mine. <laughs> so I was sort of minding my own business uh, in L.A., and I was one of those folks who was dismissive arrogant and judgmental about cannabis as an entire space. I've never been high or drunk in my life. I don't really give a fuck if you believe it or not. It just is. And then we segued into cannabis and he said, what do you know about the space? We have a company called Invictus. And I, I had to then do the confessional that you Christians do in, in a dark booth someplace to a guy you never met. That's fucking hot, I gotta tell you that. There's a guy with a yarmulke on his head over there, it's a dark booth and you, just can, you can just say all kinds of shit. That's what a confessional is. And so I said I was arrogant, dismissive, uh, uninformed, and I thought of cannabis in the same way that a lot of sort of straight-laced folks do. Because despite the fact that I have pretty face and nice hair and all this stuff, 
I'm a very cornball kind of guy. I am as square as they get. I've always hated hippies. I never marched with them. I may agree with the politics, but I thought most people were unqualified to, to even have a, a, an opinion on this stuff. So I was dismissive because I thought the wrong people were involved. Cheech and Chong, and all, like losers, stoners. And I'm not. I read books and <laughs> I'm fairly well read. And those folks I found were lower life forms. And, <laughs> but I mean that in the very nicest way. <laughs> and then I said, I, I didn't know. I didn't know that about two years ago I started seeing videos, and you can go online and find out about especially one small child, six-year-old girl who was breaking her mother's heart, of course, because she had epilepsy and she was shaking. And I couldn't take my eyes off the screen when a salve, not even internally, but externally, you see the loving eyes of the mother rubbing this cannabis-based salve on the skin, and in a very short time, miraculously, it seems she gets cured. And the documentary went on to say that doctors don't quite understand it, but indeed, you can take internal or external various forms of cannabis, and for some reason, it seems to cure all kinds of ailments, including lowering stress levels, all kinds of stuff. And then I thought about it, and I, I was said, I, did, I didn't know that, and shame, shame on me that I didn't know that stuff of it, when all I knew about was the Cheech and Chong, yeah, man, all that kind of stuff. And then I did research about that, just about the recreational stuff, the full-powered, high-octane stuff, and I thought, well, here's the judgment I made for myself, perhaps you'll agree. If you drink a lot of alcohol and you go to a bar, there's a term for that when you get messed up. It's called a bar fight. There's actually a term. It means you drink too much and you do stupid things and you exert violence. That's a bar fight. <laughs> These are jokes. These are jokes. <laughs> and of course, there's the classic DUI which is not like J-E-W. See, that's a different thing. A DUI is what happens when you drink too much and you drive and you actually wind up killing people for fuck's sake. And there are who knows how many thousands and ten thousands of people who are killed because somebody was drinking too much. Or you can go the full day and smoke cigarettes and possibly or probably get cancer. The other stuff, cannabis-based products, Let's see what might happen. You might continue to watch the same reruns of, uh, of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, <laughs> or perhaps The Littlest Hobo, and you know you've seen all those shows of the, Re the Republic of Doyle, for fuck's sake, you can't see it again. No, no, you'll watch it over and over again. You may reach over for a Kit Kat, and that's it. That's it. One might give you cancer, this one, you'll smile like a fool and eat Kit Kats all day. <laughs> and I'm stating fact, I'm not even exaggerating it. So I thought, this should be on the menu of life in various forms. I'm not fond of spinach, but I don't think it should be banned. It should be on the choice menus of life. You wanna smoke cigarettes, you might get a chat. It's legal, good luck to you. You wanna, you wanna binge watch <laughs> Republic of Doyle and have a Kit Kat? Fuck, have a good time. <laughs> but more importantly, medicinally, the scientists and researchers are telling us this is an enormous advancement, and big pharma, that's big pharmaceutical companies, don't want you to get educated. They want to charge you, they want to charge you as much as $7,500 for one pill. That's not an exaggeration, because it's academic. Somebody just makes up a number, that's what we're going to charge for this. Cannabis-based products, you can grow it on the roof of your house. and so. so before I stop talking because I love the sound of my own voice, uh, hand to God. I really like, I like the way it resonates and uh, I like that certain chenise I have. I like it all. 
I want you to know that, uh, first of all, I have a Newfie wife. She was born and she's a maritimer. She was born in Newfoundland. My hand to God, she graduated Dildo High School. <laughs> am I, Canadians, am I lying? There's a place called Dildo, right? It's true. It's, I had a, my wife and I had a Dildo burger at the Dildo restaurant overlooking Placentia Bay where there were whales spouting uh, things and I thought, and the dildo burger was very good. I was afraid to ask what it was made out of. <laughs> and next to Placentia Bay, not far, is Come By Chance. And on the other side is Spread Eagle. And the reason I'm not smiling is it's all fucking true. <laughs> and so Canada's always been such a bizarre place, really. There's only 12 of you in the whole fucking country. <laughs> but you are so unbelievably amazing. One of the, some, some of the. <laughs> you're good looking, you're smart, you're kinder and nicer than Americans ever will be. You're, you're better in shape, you're, you, you have, uh, the air is better up here. And you're so much forward thinking than the Americans, really. Look at how cool your prime minister just looks. As Soon as he quits this job, he's gonna go down the runway. You know, he's gonna be a model. What are you waiting for? I'm not done talking. So, I would urge you, so my hat's off to Canada. I love this country if I, uh, bo both our kids are also Canadian citizens as well as American citizens. My beloved is building a house in Whistler. I'm not allowed to go unless I ask permission and that's the truth. But, and, and finally the last thing I wanna say is, listen to me, ignore what every single person up here has to say, really. Ignore the fact that thing and there's celebrity going on and everything. I don't want you to consider anything except your own inferred self-mandated responsibility, which is to fucking do your own research. Find out what the amazing new research is about cannabis in general. And then if you're curious, and I'm not here to tug on your shirt sleeves because they're regulatory, all kinds of things, and rightfully so. If you're curious, go to invictus-md.com. The reason I got involved is first as a financial play and I liked the management. And since I got involved, I have to tell you, I'm so proud to be in a group of people who actually look at each other and smile when they go to work because we believe we're doing something really good for mankind, womenkind, that this is actually gonna help life improve, and that's what it's all about. Now you can come up on stage. Aww.